you all the glory because you are the only, only one who is worthy and who will ever be worthy. We praise you, we honor you, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's give glory to the Father. Amen.
Yeah. 
To be 
I was thinking about no, no priest and priest and people telling that, that the rain is coming, the floods are coming, but nobody was listening. Yeah. Come on. Nobody was listening. But he did the old thing. Why is he doing the same thing? 
Say it. Because let me tell you something, when you really be touched, how many people know Saul? Saul turned into Paul. But you know what happened? He was touched by it. He never went back to killing people. Never. Come on. But what he did, he changed everything. That's right. He changed everything in his lifestyle. I was talking to my mother the other day, and I said, you know what? I said, I remember growing up in the church in Macaw. And I said, I grew up and I remember we'd have old fashioned camp meetings and, and everything. People would come in. And they would be on this altar for hours. And afterwards, you'd find the bobby pins. But something was different about them because when they went home and they, they got touched, they would go clean their house. Sure. They would go empty the, everything in their refrigerators. They would go empty the house. They didn't care what it may cost them. They said, I'm going to throw it away because I don't need it in my house. Come on. I asked me one to come and get touched by God and fall out with my ha ha he he and go Say out it. But what happens when God really touches you and you go back home and clean the house out? Come on. What happens when you say, you know what, I'm not going to put up with that lifestyle I came in here with? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You have to have a determination saying, I'm not going to live like that. I'm not going to live like the devil anymore. I'm going to shake the city upside down. I'm going to do something with God. Sure. I remember when I was a teenager. I was 12, 13 years old. I remember we would have services and we would have them in a brick house in the basement. And some of them times were the best services because you think when God would touch us, I remember the next week we'd have a garbage can full of hundreds and hundreds of dollars of pornography and videos and games and everything because people were giving everything away and saying, I don't want this lifestyle anymore. And we would burn it. And I, and I think now, I understand why we burn it because no one would go back to it. That's all right. But now we always just put it, let's just put it in the garage because I might go back to it. Say it. But I learned something. If we just burn it or never look at it again, it would be good. But most people, whenever they, they, they get saved, they say, well, I don't really want to throw it away because it costs me some money. It's okay to lose something like that because God don't care about it. And some of them mothers and some of them fathers that back then it was funny because they were mad because they just bought a video game of killing it and the kids were in the dumpster. Yeah. I remember when I got saved and I, and I, and I, I was in church for about six or seven months and I was telling people at school, I said, hey, you know, there's something crazy about that church I go to. They shout, they jump, they run, they do everything. They speak in this tongue we don't even understand. Hmm. I said, well, there's power in that building. You can feel it like electric hits you up when you walk in. So I took this boy. He didn't know anything. I, mean, I know his name and I can see it right now. It's funny. He came in and yeah. God touched him. He said, I got to get rid of everything I had. And I said, yeah, you got to because God wants you to touch him. It was amazing. I took him to the dumpster and he came out with two big boxes like this with pornography, Playboy. He said, man, you have no idea. I spent thousands of dollars all, you know, he threw it in the dumpster. He said, my life can never be the same. It's going to be different. That's right. Because I'm going to have that in my life. Come on, Drew. When he sung a song tonight, I, I could just run around the road John and I kept singing it. Free. Because if you understand, so, you know, we always go in, in Acts chapter 16 where Paul and Silas was in a Roman jail and they got free. But that day, something, they were not in a Roman jail because of a DUI. They were not in a, a, a jail because they did something bad. They preached the gospel. That's how they got in jail. If you study your Bible, you find out that Paul and Silas were in there for nothing bad. They were in there for something good. And when you catch on fire for God, let me tell you something. I'm not going to tell you to be easy. Because Paul was in the Roman jail. It wasn't easy for him. But guess what? God used him in the Roman jail. In Acts chapter 16, you read about him. And, and, and they started singing at midnight. I ain't going to sing to you because you leave the building. <laughs> but with Paul and Silas, everyone didn't sing. Not everyone had to sing. They listened. But they were listening to Paul and Silas. Come in unity. Whenever two people come in agreement, guess what? Things can be broken. So Paul and Silas were singing and they came in unity. And as we know, an earthquake, I don't know if you've ever been in one, but I've not. Maybe a small one or something that I didn't really understand or felt. But they had something that was shaking the Roman jail. And the jailer was outside, sleeping. And these guys got free. He jumped up scared because he thought they would rain. I don't know about you, but I guarantee you one thing. If I went to your jail and they got free, I guarantee all of them would run out. <laughs> but 
But they didn't run out. They didn't leave. They said, we're still here. We're still here. Paul said, don't kill yourself. He was about to kill us because he knew he'd get in trouble for them leaving. Sometimes God puts us in a place like that for a sign or a wonder to show up for people to get help. That jailer did not throw himself to, to, to die because he did. He's seen a sign or a wonder. If I put you in a jail house and something happened, I guarantee you run out. You wouldn't sit back in that jail and say, oh, I'm just sitting here. No. But one thing about it, Paul and Silas, everywhere they put their signs, wonders, and miracles. Everywhere we go, guess what's supposed to follow us? Signs, wonders, and miracles. The Bible doesn't say that, that we seek signs, wonders, and miracles, but they follow the believer. Come on. How many of you are a believer? Amen. I mean, if you're not a believer by now, let's just go down to the water to get breathing and come back up. Praise the Lord. Because, I mean, we preach to you salvation a hundred times. You should have died by now if not come to us after church and we're teaching the salvation center. But see, I'll tell you something. When you become a believer, there's something required from you. There's an authority that's given to you. There's a power that's given to you. There's instructions given to you when you become a believer. Not to sit home and just stare at the needy all day. Not to just watch Netflix all day and chill. But it's called to what? Change the world. If you don't know that by now, you are a special agent for, sent from heaven to change the world. You're better than the FBI, the CIA, because you got more power than them. That's right. All they have is handguns and, 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 and some things that hope to get handcuffs. But you got some power behind what you say. And if you can understand what God given you, you'd start using it. Because it's important that we start doing something with what God given us. There's resurrection power that lives on the inside of you. How many people believe that Jesus resurrected? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He didn't just, he didn't die. He saved you. He resurrected three days later. That same power that, that grows him from the day, guess where it lives? On the inside. Huh. Come on. Huh. He lives on the inside. That's right. See, that same power that resurrected him lives on the inside. Some of us just have more space than others. Yeah. <laughs> True. I'm just telling you, there's something inside of you Big that is supposed to come out and be unleashed. Come on. And when you unleash that, guess what happens? Heaven will meet earth. That's right. Heaven will not be earth because we're over here praying in the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If that was going to happen, trust me, I heard what it would say by now. Because they have more prayer than anything. But it takes an act of faith. It takes an act of stepping out in the unknown. It takes an act of stepping out in the streets and saying, you know what? I'm going to go out here and tell someone what God has done for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because Paul is only told by his experience. See, Pastor Danny has gone through things I've never went through. I went through things he's never went through. I cannot tell his story. He can't tell my story. But guess what? You can tell your story. Try. You have a story, a testimony, that there's something that what God can do. That's and right. how God can set you free. Come on. You have to get... Mm, I have to be careful because I'm on a mission tonight. <laughs> I'm on a mission to unleash some power on the inside of you to go change the world. Say it. Some of you have been so locked up for a long time you used to be unplugged. If I was a plumber, I'd say, I'd call in and say, we've got to unplug some people. Say it. You're so full of crap and you ain't going to be done. Hmm. Yeah. Because when you push everything out, then you can start flowing correctly. Come on. Why don't you use the men's bathroom just let me get some details for you? Uh-huh. If that thing is so stocked up, you can't go in there and poop again. You know what? You're going to get messy on top of it. Let me get graphic tonight for you. That's what our lives do. They get so clogged up and the mess comes on top of us and everyone says, man, they're missing. Oh, preach. So if we allow God to come in as the Holy Ghost plunger and plunge everything out of us, everything will be able to flow. Come on. If you want to flow, yeah. you might say, I'm messed up. It's okay to be messed up. But come and get set free so God can use you. That's right. 
Because when he touches you, everything that is all the mess that you know you have, and let me tell you something, sometimes some of us are messier than others. Amen. And when God touches, he'll clean up the mess. Yes. And he'll want, he wants to use you. Yes. I mean, if you go to Jeremiah 29 verse 11, there's a purpose and a plan for you to prosper. Yes. The plan, of, the plan was not for you to, to just be miserable for all your Come life. on. It was not for you to be always arguing with everybody. Say it. I thought about distractions last night if he wasn't here. Yeah. Because they ain't got some distractions of it. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, God wants to unleash some things on in the inside of you that God can use you. That's right. You might be the devil this morning, but can I tell you, when God tells you, you can know everything can change from now on. Come on. Because let me tell you something. Paul, named Saul, was so bad that day, but one act of God touched him and changed his life. That's right. Because if you get so hungry and thirsty, things will start changing in Colombia. Come on. It cannot be tell you something. I got fascinated in this tonight. Or last night. I said, so many people count on you to get their freedom. Can I tell you one day what happens if he's gone? Yeah. What happens if him and Pastor are gone? Can you get your own freedom? Can you get your own touch? Because this thing, if you're going to be so hungry and engaged with God, I'm Pastor Dan. Come on. You cannot say, hey, I come to church because Pastor Dave is right. I come to church because God called me. Hey! Yeah. 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 Say it. But we call him God. Say it. When you enter them, them doors, you don't come in here complaining. You don't come in here mumbling. You come in here praising. That's right. Because Paul and Silas didn't just sit there complaining and mumbling. Hmm. I'm young, I'm young, I'm young. But when they walked through the doors, you know what they started doing? They started praising God. And then the chains started falling off. See, let me tell you something. Sometimes praise can do all more than pray. Because most of us, a lot of us don't know how to pray and we complain. Oh, come on. So if we just come and say, God, I'm giving you all of my prayers. I don't care who's on my leg. I don't care who's on my heart. I'm giving it all to you. And when you start praising God, guess what happens? All the shackles, all the mess that you've been missing will start falling off of you left and right and center. And when you leave these doors, you don't leave them going back with the same change. You don't go leave them with the same mess. You go as a free man. When you get back in the car, you get your husband, you get your wife, you get the person you gave me and say, you know what? God has touched me tonight. And I'm never going back because God has a plan for me and my family. If you don't believe it, you'll never receive it. But I'm telling you, some of you, God wants to do some amazing things for you. I can go story after story with everything in the Bible. Can I tell you something? If we just read this book like it's a story, tell us what it's going to be to us. That's exactly story. right. Yep. But I'm not ready for it just to say Peter preach to people in 3,000. I'm ready for Andy to stand up and start speaking the word people can say. I'm ready for you to stand up and start preaching the gospel people can say. Not just Peter. Peter walked there, the places in the shadow hill of the sick. I'm waiting for Jonathan to stand up in the shadow hill of the sick. I'm Come tired on. of reading the Bible and all I said it was just a story. It was a story someone 2,000 years wrote up. But what about you? The same person. The same disciple. Because here's the thing. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're a disciple. That's what you are. You're a disciple. And the disciples that he was with, you know what they did? They laid hands on the sick. They cast out devils. They disciple other people. And as a believer, you become a disciple. So you know what you're going to do? To, be a, to also disciple people. How do you disciple someone if your own life is so messed up? How do you disciple? How do you want to lay hands on the sick whenever you don't even know that God's even healing? It's because you have to have that one experience and never go back. Some of you, I can tell you, I can mark, I can have even seen with my own eyes. Some of you in this own altar have been touched by God, but as soon as you walk out, you just say, I want to go back the same way I came. Come on. But when you just say, you know what, I'm leaving all my crap here, because here's the thing. Like I told you, when I was younger, we'd leave the stuff in the barrel and we would burn it. Yeah. Leave all of it here and let God burn it up. When the fire burns, it burns every issue, every problem in your life, and it burns it away. Only us pick it back up. 
Jesus never accuses you again and says, hey, you know, you, you know what you did last night? He doesn't do that. It's like he hits a button, a reset button, a forgetful button. He don't remember it anymore. He throws every sin, every problem you never did, he throws it in the sea and he always forgets that everything about it. He forgets it. He doesn't bring it up. The only the devil brings up the past. Right. When people start bringing up your past, you used to do this, hey, you accuse of the brother, you devil. I didn't do that. I'm a new man. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Someone say, is he going to read the Bible yet? In a minute, in a minute, I'll get it. But I'm telling you something, there's something on the inside of you that need to get on fire for God and change your neighborhood. Because whenever God touched people, even if you don't, don't tell nobody, you know what they did? They went and told somebody. Because they couldn't keep quiet. Come on. God only puts his finger on you. Say it. When God only puts his finger on you, you cannot keep quiet. Last night, it was dark downstairs. <laughs> and I was going to the bathroom. And if you know it was black, put that out there for a moment. I was going to the bathroom, I was coming back, and it was pitch black. And thank God I heard it before I seen it, because I didn't see it. <coughs> he came up and tried to tap on my shirt, and I had my fist like this. And I was thinking after that, I said, Woo, he almost got knocked out. <laughs> he almost got knocked out. I was about to lay him out of the Jesus' name. But I was thinking about something. Some of us are so easy to jump in the flesh. Oh. We've got something, you know, it sidetracks us. Boom. Oh. Preach. But see, if I was so. Ha. 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 Oh, shock out, Baba. I'm glad I heard it because it's red before I had seen it. Because I didn't see it at all. I mean, if I see anything, I'd go with the pupils and maybe his teeth. Ha. 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 But I'm telling you something. I didn't see it coming. And some of you have allowed things to come in your life that you didn't ever see coming. And it hasn't grabbed a hold of you and put you in a mess. It put you in problems. Mm. But here's the one thing about God. God will put the light on it and make that thing run away from you. Yeah. But you have to allow the light of God to come on you. <laughs> when the light of God comes on you, it will shine everything to go. <coughs> because demons flee when the fire of God comes. Oh, See, I don't know why some people even want to talk about demons. Because demons are down in their suit. They can't even do anything. If they try, they do it wrong. Because the devil can't do anything right. So we don't have to talk about all that nonsense. God does so much more powerful things. He does so much powerful things. And there's a sea and there's people who are hungry for God. And it's up for us, me and you, to do something. Yep. You might not be able to ever travel to Africa. You might never be able to travel across Kentucky. You might not ever buy a ticket. This way you can, but you can tell someone about Jesus. Sure. I tell people, especially the people that uh, I was saying, they choose to stay in wheelchairs. Yeah, I said they choose to stay there. Because if you really want, you can go after your healing just like you go after anything else. So I tell them, I say, you know what, you choose to sit there and be like you are. That's fine, whatever you want to do. But I'm not going to choose like that. Because every time someone calls, you tell them, hey, God has a plan for your life. Then God loves them. You can do anything. Everywhere you go, you can tell someone about Jesus. Like that, the other day, Pastor Danny took me to the safe house. And that safe house is good. So now what I have to do is I have to tell me, man, that place there in Columbia is good. That safe house is good. Because when you taste something good, guess what you want to do? You want to tell everybody about it. Say it. So when, you, when God touches you, what do you want to do? If you go home and not tell anyone, I don't think he touched you. Say it. Preach. Preach. Because when God really touches you, you want to tell everybody. Yes. You have to tell. It's like something burnt or something jumped on the side of your head. I tell you. Yep. You can shut it off if you want to. You can't shut up. The real deal. Because I've seen the faith. You know what happens to the faith? They weak out. Yep. They come in. Hallelujah. Yep. They make a scene for themselves. Yep. That's what the devil wants to do. Then finally, the next week they're here. They're yep. there. They're there. Yep. Preach. But the real fire, the real presence that touched, will tell everyone about Jesus. Yep. Amen. 
19, hey, God touched me. God changed me. God healed me. God delivered me. Yep. I was so missing and God did something for me. Come on. When I got saved, I wanted everyone to come to that church because here's the thing, there was something different about that church than I've ever been to. How is the church ever going to grow? It's because it's one-on-one. I don't believe a pastor can ever make the church all grow. It takes everybody one-on-one to go get someone to say, hey, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've experienced, but I know what I experienced. I know what God did for me. Peter got up and preached because he had an experience with God. Sure. How many of you have ever actually had an experience with God? Just be honest with you. No. If you ain't never had one tonight, you can have one. We preach the experience of Jesus around here. Come we on. We preach Jesus is the Bible. That's right. We preach that Jesus heals around here. Yes. Some people don't believe in Jesus. But we preach that. We believe in Jesus. We know it. Yes. Because as soon as we lay our hands on their head, guess what happens? All the demons that's are right. happening. Come on. And if you just submit yourself, the devil will never come back. You know what amazes me? Some people, God will touch them, shake them, set them free, but they will go back in the world and get something more strong. Yep. But if they only understood the power that God has, they would never want anything else to do with the devil. Never. Because all the devil does is three things. You know what he does? Steal, kill, and destroy. But what does Jesus do? He comes to give abundant life. So if you're not living the life of the abundance, guess what? Are you living in his week? Because the enemy loves to steal. He loves to kill. He loves to destroy. He loves. He feeds off of that. He likes to come in and pick on this side, this side, and this side. But what God does, he comes in and amends the family and heals the family. That's how you know if God, if God sends someone to the right and you're trying to talk to you, are they here to destroy me, kill me? Or oh, you? talk to us. See, I can preach, tell preach, about preach. Is it God sent or devil sent? Yes. How are they speaking to my spirit? Come on. Are they speaking, hey, you know what? I don't know what's been going on with you, but God can do something great with you. I don't know how you've been feeling, but I don't know whether God can touch you or not. Then I know people, well, you back to you, you're going to die. I got people who can eat that people and watch it in the main character. Say it. Yeah. Get out of here, you devil. The devil are sitting on me because of one thing. The devil's in there. Yeah. I know that because the devil went after me. Yeah. I can back it up with scripture. The devil come after you and see and try to speak something in your ear, trying to say, hey, and put down the belief in your heart. Come on. But when God's people show up on the scene, guess what happens? Life comes in. That's why I say you're an agent of change. Come on. We can't play church anymore. Say we can't be a powerful church. He that's didn't come it. back for people playing. I didn't come back. I'm not coming back to church for people playing panic cake, panic cake, baker's man. Say it. I'm coming for a church that is strong. Hey! Say it. I'm coming back to a church that come is on. strong and powerful. Come on. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm telling you something. If you think it's just going to be a hallelujah, you missed it. Yeah. Yeah. I was preaching in Africa. I won't tell you what I really need. And if I told you, I won't, I won't tell you what I would tell that to a bit. I'll say that. I was preaching and something inside of me in Africa. They have a church here and here in the same building. And I was preaching. I said, you don't believe in the power of God. You can hit your, hit, hit your butt right over there because they don't believe it. But God wants to touch people today. And some people say, whoa. Because God is alive in the way. When I told them that, some of them had never experienced the power of God. Because it, so many people know church, but they don't know Him. Yeah. They know religion, but they don't know Jesus. Say it. They know all of this man-made stuff. Say it. It's all right. And it really made me mad because they came into church dressed in a certain way, and I didn't care how they dressed. That's all they did. Because, I mean, I don't care if you wear shorts or if you wear a tie, that don't bother me. You don't expect me to do what you do, and I'm okay. But I'm telling you, I told him the power of God wants to touch them, and he's alive and well. Come on. If you don't want the power of God somewhere else, you're going to feel it here. Oh. Say it. Why are you wasting your time? Say it. Do something else. Yeah. But when you come here, come expecting the 
Come on. Come on. Come on. Shit about it. Hey! 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 That's exactly right. And I'm telling you, if Jesus can do it with 10 and 11 and 12, what about 300? Come on. What about 300? Come on. <laughs> Shut up, buddy. really messing me up because people are shouting. Andre it's time that you be discipled and receive the power and, and, and listen to what God tells you. Because if you're not careful, you'll start doing one thing that God didn't tell you. Yeah. And then you make a mess and say, well, I don't know what happened, God. He said, I never told you to do it. Sorry. Exactly. But if you listen to him and receive the power, you'll have hmm, oh. you'll have a great impact. Andre Boshe. And Daniel says, 
be strong. Them that know God will do what? Exports. Who knows what an exploit is? Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. Stop thinking small. Yeah. Some of you need to crush your mind and say, you know what, I'm tired of saying things and small that. That's stinky thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start thinking big for me and my family. I'm going to start thinking big for the, for the garden church. I'm going to start thinking big for this ministry. Tonight, some of you need to crush your mentality and say, you know what, I'm getting rid of that nasty mentality. I'm going bigger. If yeah. I was going to ask Donald Trump for something, maybe I told him I should, I don't remember. All I remember is telling somebody. But if I see Donald Trump, he's a billionaire, right? He's actually about three to four point billion dollars. If I was going to go to him, you know what I wouldn't ask him? I wouldn't ask him for a hundred dollar bill. That would be stupid. Too. I wouldn't ask him for a hundred dollar bill. You know why? He can do something much bigger. Yeah. 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 I was sitting at the YMCA a few months ago and I was talking to some guys that are, are board members and they said, you know what, we asked the city for $5,000 and one guy said, you asked the city of Richmond for $5,000 and that's it you asked them for? You thought it was too small. And I started thinking, you know what, the church says that we ask things from God too small. Yeah. Because you know what, if I was named Donald Trump, I wouldn't ask him for, for $1,000, I wouldn't even ask him for $50,000, I wouldn't even ask him, I would ask him at least for a million. Or at least for me, and I said, give me a tithe. That's what I asked him. And if I was going to ask Donald Trump that, that, why wouldn't I ask God something bigger? Because he owns it all. Hey! Because he said the wealth of the wicked is hey. the righteous. Come on! Some of you got to understand, what the enemy is holding is actually yours. That's right. Oh, come now, on. If you would just understand what the word is, there's actually going to be a transfer from the enemy to us. Yes. But you have to prepare yourself for it. Ah. Uh. That's why there's discipleship class here on Thursday nights. That's why there's things in the church to, to, to get you ready for what God called you to for. Yep. <laughs> That's why he told his disciples, sit back, relax in the prayer room, and just receive the power. And when, as soon as you receive it, do something with it. Now some people I know, they receive the power and they went sit back down. I don't know why they did it. Yep. It's so crazy how some people jump out without the power and some people that have the power sit down. I don't know. Sometimes I just want to kick some of them. Yeah. Not in, the, not in the spiritual either, in the physical. Yeah. Because if you can understand how much power you carry, yeah. huh. mm -hmm. how many people actually understand to carry the power? Not so much. I mean, you really you understand to carry power. You have to really understand how much power you carry. Mm -hmm. You know the power that's coming to this place. When we were doing the tent the first time, we plugged in the wrong thing and blew the power outside. You know that's how much power you carry. When you touch the devil, everything goes a boom. Yep. Not at all. change everything inside. <laughs> when you Come touch the devil, it's gonna fly because you got so much power. Say it. Huh. <laughs> Shaka Baba. You better get ready because I'm telling you, this thing is about to shift and shift. Yep. Up. Things are shifting in the atmosphere. Yep. Things are shifting in the atmosphere. Yes, it is. Three times <laughs> over. Not time to play. There's a mandate on everybody's life here. Everybody. I don't care how old you are. If you got breath in your body, you have a mandate. Come on. You might not even finish college. It's okay. You might not even finish high school. It's okay. As long as you just get so hungry for God, God will teach you everything. Yeah. But you know one good thing about a student? A good student that does what you know he does? He submits it. A, a good student will come with a pen and paper and say, you know what? God teach me how to do it. Mm. And one thing I love about God, God always puts people above us to teach us something. It's his order of God. I told you the other night that Jesus was a teacher. He was a rabbi. God put certain people in our life for us to learn from, that we can learn and use it. But if we if we always listen to it, we never apply it, guess what happens? Nothing. Sometimes I don't know why they teach algebra, because not everyone uses algebra. But some people do, but I don't, I don't know how nothing about it. Yeah. But when I, use, when I read the Word of God and I apply the Word of God, you know what happens? It works. So if you start reading the Word of God, and you start applying the Word of God, guess what happens? It works. Right. When Pastor Nina is preaching up here on Thursday nights teaching you something, you read the scripture and you start applying it to your life, guess what happens? It, it changes works. your life. Works. There's a difference of hearing the scripture and using the scripture.
That's right. There's a difference that knowing God and actually knowing God. That's right. Or I should say it's a difference of knowing of God. Because many people have heard of God, but they've never seen the power of God. That's right. It amazes me this. In the New Testament, that's the New Covenant, right? That's what you live, me and you live in today. We live in the New Covenant. Do you know how the church grew? Because people stood up with the power. Peter stood up with the power. People started coming. We have to go with the power. We have to walk with the power. But if we don't do nothing, nothing's going to happen. We're going to have the same service over and over. Eventually, we're going to get tired and say, you know what, this ain't working. But if we get what called the Holy Ghost fire on the inside of us, we get really what he's called us. Come on. No one's going to stop. Come on, Jeff. No. Yeah. Right. He wants to restore. That's right. I love what Pastor Lena said. She got up there talking about restoration. And I don't really believe even when I came in on Monday night, I felt like there was something in here restoration people and restoring people back to where God called them. Yeah. Yep. He's putting you back where He's called you to be. The world has torn you down enough. The world has said you ain't no good. The world can tell you everything bad, but here's the God Preach. and restores you back to the right Preach. Place. Some of you have my God. Some of you really believe you are done. And that's what's sad. Yep. I'm going to be honest with you. And you are. <laughs> as long as you believe. As long as you believe you're done, guess what you are? Yep. You're done. You are what you believe. <laughs> if you ask him how much money he has, he'll tell you I have a God. That's right. He keeps telling me I got feelings. That's right. I might not see anything else, but it's not. If I ask you how you do this, they have healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's right. Come on. It's because it's that you're not letting what the world is saying about you to come over you anymore. That's right. You're not letting what God said about you come over you anymore. That's right. That's why we'll be joined with you. We've 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 joined with you. we have joined with you 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 we have joined with
But Jesus doesn't do that. And if we have what is resurrection power living on the inside of us, we don't believe. Right. And as believers, we got to repent and watch and God, I'm sorry, I should have never acted like I should have never acted like a fool. I say all the time, I always think of God, forgive me, and I was just like, I probably should have acted like that. Because when, when I start learning something, I get in His presence, guess what happens? All that nonsense burns up. But the, the closer you get here, and I'm using this as a fire, mm-hmm. everything burns up, but the, the farther you get back, yeah. you start doing nonsense. Yeah. You, start, you start doing stupid yeah. stuff. And then you keep on moving because instead of really wanting the fire, you just want to playing with it and rock with it. You want to go this way with God a little bit, sometimes you want to go this way with the enemy because it's so easy. Like, it looks easy this way, but you don't understand where you push it this way. It's harder to get that way. It's harder to get closer to God when the enemy is this way because now you start thinking like the enemy. You start thinking like the devil. Oh, uh, preach it. on. And some of you, I know it for a fact. So many of you have been so close to it and say, I'm almost here. But someone taps on your shoulder and it pulls you all the way back. Yep. If you will just allow God to do what He's called you to do, you will burn for Him. And what it makes me is so easy to be pulled back and pulled back and pulled back. But if you forget everything about it, say, God, I'm running after you this year. I'm running after you. Nothing's going to stop me. No distractions this last six months of 2022. I promise you, in January 1st, 2023, this church will explode. That's right. The pressure's not on Pastor Danny, the pressure's not on Pastor Danny, it's on me. What are you going to do? I can't believe he just put the, he, he gave us a command. Well, let me tell you something. Go to Mark 11. Start Mark 16. Please go with the word. I told you it's going to go to the Bible. Hallelujah. Mark 16. I'm almost done. I'm not telling people are ready to go. Ha shaka baba. Preach. Mark 16. This is what I love about God. It's not me giving you the commandments. God gave you the commands. You just never read it. Yeah. <laughs> then he said to them, Who's them? Us. Us. A believer. Yep. Yeah. He didn't tell the demons to go out there. He told us, the believers. Yes. The believe, if you're a believer, I actually heard, I'm going to step right here and raise your hand. Uh huh. You know, even if you ain't, you raise your hand anyway. Yeah. And you get right for the, the services, okay? Mm-hmm. So he's speaking to you. Oh, shock out of Then he said to them, Go into all the world. Yeah. Uh huh. Where? All. Did he say stay in our house? All. Did he say put a mask on and stay in our house? All. A L L. He said, "Go into all, all the world. All where? All. all of the world. So the first place you start is your neighborhood. Yeah. So I don't understand this either. Before I went to Africa, I was doing many crusades in my neighborhood. See, I'll show you another scripture in a minute where it actually says, huh, first go in the neighborhood. First thing go to the city. First thing go to the same thing of all the world.'" But Jesus spoke to these people. He said, go all to the world. What did he say? Did he go say, hey, go complain? Uh-uh. No, I hate it. It's not in there. No. Oh, go tell how bad my life is. No, he didn't say that either, did he? No. And preach. Someone say preach. Preach. He didn't say go pastor. He said go preach. Preach. Oh, he didn't say go start your own ministry. He said, go preach. Go preach the gospel. Ha. The gospel. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? Good news. Yeah. Not bad news. Not when you go into the world and start preaching, hey, God loves you. Well, you know, I've had some bad days. Yeah, me too. That ain't good news. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I'm happy you're going to be like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm in better shape than they are in the church. Come on. Weirdos. <laughs> then, then they got something. I'm going to give them a better life than they are. That's it. He didn't say go tell them how many problems you have at home. Say it. He said go tell them the gospel. The good say news. it. 
I like taking the name and I can do that. So today. Emma's in trouble. Yeah, Emma's in trouble. I love Emma. But it was amazing because we were leaving, we left the park one day, and Emma and her, Pastor David asked Emma, I said, Did we accomplish anything? Emma said, No. <laughs> confident, boy, Emma is. And he gave us the. He gave us all order. kinds of no, confidence. Space order, one on one. We've been working hot in the sun for an hour. Did you guys do anything great? Nope. Wow. <laughs> we didn't get close to well. Thanks, Emma. But then we reached home, and then God put a test on Emma Facebook. We didn't know the person. That's how amazing God is. When yes. We're working and we don't see it, it's because He's working. Oh. That's right. <laughs> Good, good, good faith, what I want to build. Yeah. God knows. Yeah. Amen. But it was good. He said, you know what? Sometimes you got to do what you're supposed to do, and God will do what He's supposed to do. Amen. He told you to preach, and let God can do it. Come on. Said, oh, I better shut up for a while. He said, let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit, and you just do what God wants you to do. Oh. Said, oh. Oh. Said, oh. Oh. So when he told me that, I said, man, he has a better revelation than I do. <laughs> he had to be the bummer now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm just going to preach the gospel and you're going to do everything else. Try. When people get touched, they get touched. And they That's go. right. He's not doing what you told me to do next. Woo! Glory! I'm putting the pressure on you. I'm putting the pressure on you. Hey! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you have to do this. Wait on, man. I have to be honest about myself. What's up, I see. If I start preaching, you know, I told you guys, Monday by Saturday. You know, I struggled. But then I started thinking for him. He said, you know what? I really don't know what happened. If one life is such a flop like that, I don't know because I'm not the Holy Spirit. I can't see everything. Sure. But he does. You know that's a way maker? Uh-huh. He is. He is working when I can't even see it. That's exactly right. It messed me up. Yep. Because maybe I don't see it in the natural, but God's doing something so much in the spirit that it's dying. Oh, come on. Maybe it's like this, you know, you ever seen that name where that one guy's working so hard, and he's almost there, and then he quits, and there's like, just a little bit uh -huh. of smoke. And then this one man, he just quits, and he keeps on going so much. What happens if we keep on going at it? Yep. Yeah. And boom, boom. Ha. 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 So I told him, I said, you know what, I'm going to use your revelation. I'm just going to preach when God does, he does, when he don't, he don't, he ain't my problem. Because I'm going to heaven and he has to, he's going to ask the victim. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's all right. That's it. Preach the gospel to all creation. Verse 16, whoever believes, whoever believes. How many people understand that whenever you go tell someone, if I haven't told you, it's amazing. When they, whenever COVID hit, when everything started to shut down, I don't know if you guys remember, but actually we're at Steakout. There's, uh, what do you call that? Steakhouse. Or not steak, uh, shake the Steak. Steak. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing something right here. It's, I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm going to mess it I remember that night. The whole America started shaking. You know, I really didn't believe it until I see it. I mean, people would call hey. Restaurants are shut down. I'm like, ah, people like to eat in America. How do they go shut down restaurants? They yeah. go buffets. I can't believe they're going to stay closed for six months. Me yeah. either. I mean, in Richmond, some buffets never open back up. Crazy. That's the biggest pandemic we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes people believe it when they what? They see it. Yeah. Peter believed it when he what? He seen, seen it. it. So guess what? How are we supposed to see things if no one's doing anything? Oh. Preach he to us. He back and wait on someone else, but God's waiting on us. Preach to us. It's a cop. It's a cop out when we say, we're waiting on God. Yeah, I'm waiting on you, Jesus. No, he's waiting on us. Because he's sure. done everything he's going to do. Yeah. Can I just tell you the truth? Yes. He's done everything he's going to do. He's already saved us. Yep. Yeah. He's already healed us. Yep. Yeah. When he did that 2,000 years ago. Yep. When the stripes went across his back 39 times, he healed us. That's exactly right. And it's amazing. And that delivered us. He actually healed us before he saved us. Yep. Yeah. And delivered us. And he delivered us. So when he resurrected, that's when he saved us. 
Tchau. E o enterreiro, o que é 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 o He already went to hell for me, so I ain't gonna go. That's right. Some people don't believe. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Some people don't believe in miracles. They just stick around. You gotta see some miracles like crazy. Uh huh. I'm the one for supernatural. I'm the one for artists to grow. Yep. I'm looking for hearts. Yep. 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 I'm asking people that have liver problems that God heals their liver. And then we can back it up with a doctor. Was it, was it Luke that was a doctor, right? We're going to pray that some, some people that are doctors get saved so they can come in here and verify some of these things. Yeah. Matthew was a what? Tax collector. We so don't, we're praying that people we that don't need taxes him. come in and say. <laughs> Praise well, the Lord. It's funny how Jesus picked his disciples. Yeah. Some of us would have never been picked. Uh, that's right. Peter was a fisherman. He was a businessman, to be honest with you. He wasn't just a fisherman and nobody out there fishing a little bass boat. He knew what was going on. God picked them people for reasons, and they said, he set this ministry up for, for reasons. We have to prepare for what God called us to do. But I'm going to say, I'm telling you this. Like, then where does he go? I'm keep going. I'll go somewhere. Whoever believes and it is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be what? Condemned. How sad is that? Mm -hmm. What happens if they don't hear what? If we if they don't hear what they're gonna do? How are they gonna hear without you? How is someone gonna hear the gospel if you don't go? If we wait on the other churches to do it, guess what's going to happen? It might never get done. But if we do what God calls us to do, it's going to be done. Because He commanded us. I'll give you an example. Whenever you get a command from work, do you, do you obey them? If they tell you an order, what do you do? If you're in the army and they tell you to do something, do you do it? Yeah. We're in the Lord's army. Whenever He gives us a commandment, He, he tells us something, we better obey. Because there's a purpose and a plan for us to obey. We might not understand it, but guess what? When we do it, things change. For example, whoever's over the army, they speak something, they, they do it, there's a reason behind it. God doesn't tell you to do something to waste your time. He tells you to do something because there's a reason behind it. There's a person, there's a place. I don't know if you know this, but there's a woman that, uh, named Mama Parsi, Rob Parsi's mother. In 2007, 2008, I went there because I thought I was going to Bible college day, and I went there for college days. And she said something that was so profound. She said, you got to be so sensitive to the Holy Ghost, you might tell you what to wear. I'm like, ah, no, that's stupid. I should have never said that. Because I didn't know what I was talking about. And sometimes we th say things we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. And God will rebuke us. Yeah. That's a good child to learn, you know, try to learn to get rebuked. So whenever she told the story, I said, I started listening because at first I said, man, that's stupid. Go Holy Ghost, they going to tell you what to wear. And then she told us the story. She said, the Holy Ghost told me to go put on a purple dress and go to the mall. It's 11 a.m. And if you know her, the way she talks, she's country the corporate. She's from Kentucky. She went to the mall and she said, God, why did you bring me down here? And she's standing there. And this woman ran up and said, I was going to kill him. I said, but I told God, I'm going to be here. If someone has a purple dress, I won't do it. She was so sensitive to the Holy Ghost. She said, I had someone else to meet, but the Holy Ghost told me to go to the mall. And when you're so sensitive to the Holy Ghost, he'll tell you where to go and how to do it. That's exactly right. And whenever she was there, that woman got set free that day. Yeah. She didn't kill herself. She got set free on the fire from God. Because of one act of obedience. Someone was set free. And it wasn't for a thousand people. It wasn't for five thousand. It wasn't even for a hundred. It was for one. Hmm. Imagine God would do something just for you. That's it. And some of you are here tonight because God has done it for you. And God wants to use you to go get the word. Oh, come on. Whew.
good more. There could be only one person. And that one person could be the next Billy Gray. Trump. That one person could be the next Billy Heat. You might hear these people talking, you don't know. But that next person could be the person that shakes America. So there's no little eyes and no whatever, no big eyes. I can't even talk about But you know what I mean? There's no big eyes, no little ears, and none of us. We're just a, a follower after Jesus. We're just beside him. And if God uses them more, it's okay. I'm just doing what God told me to do. So we can't become jealous in the ministry. Come on. We can't become jealous in the church because that's not what God called us to. He called us to walk in unity. So when God calls us to these things, let me tell you the things are about to explode. If I get jealous of Pastor Nina because she can preach a lot better than I can. I can get jealous of Jonathan because he can play, he can sing better than I can. I can become jealous because of Pastor Nina because he can play the guitar better than but that's not what God told me to do. God told me to do this. I do what God tells me, not what anyone else tries to make me do. I learned a long time ago. I can only, I can only tell you, how, hey, read the word and do what God's calling you to do. But if I start giving you my armor, guess what? My armor's gonna be too big for you. So in this in this in this church, it's not about the difference, it's about Jesus. If God starts using you, don't become a big head. It's not you either. It's, it's not about you. Because the only thing is he used a donkey. Sure. You think you're so good? Well, I'll compare yourself to that donkey. Uh, that donkey. You really know who you are. Man, roast you. Yeah. Here, donkey. Oh. You used a chicken, too. Yeah. You used a rooster. Exactly. So don't get too big a head until we know where you are. That's why that's why I said you can't get jealous. You can't get worried about that. Just do what God tells you to do the hour. Yeah. So, when you do that, people get set free. Because yes. real compassion will come into your heart. Yes. We did some if you're out here telling someone about Jesus and really nothing happened, you need to monitor yourself. Oh. Uh -huh. I won't even mention the guy there, but there's a guy that went to India. He spent five years in India preaching and preaching and doing everything. Nothing happened. No salvation, no miracles, nothing. He came back here, got filled with the Holy Ghost. He went back and his ministry changed. Yep. Because he received the power. So if you're out there doing something and it ain't working, go back to God and say, God, give me more power. Or give me the real power. <laughs> Whoever believes in the that will be saved. You know what that means? People will be saved because if we tell them. Yeah. It's a promise from God that people will be saved. Yeah. I, have to, I have to go with that Bible scripture that they will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. What signs? Remember we talked about it in the first time. Salvation, miracles, and healing. When we have services, we should have salvation, healing, and miracles, and deliverances. Without that, we're just having another religious service. So when you go out and preach the gospel, the signs of God shall follow you. What are the signs? Salvation, healing, miracles, deliverance. What do you want to follow? Some of you got this in your spirit. Yeah. So when you do step out, you got to start seeing the salvation, healing, and miracles, and deliverance. Hmm. Signs will accompany those. Means they'll be with them, right? Yes. We ain't got to seek a sign. The sign will come out with us. Sure. There is people that seek the sign. There is. There's a lot of people out here in the restaurant that are seeking the sign. Yeah. There's like that woman was seeking a sign from her mama Barcy. She had no idea it was going to be her, but she was seeking a sign. There's people out here who are seeking, saying, God, if you're real, yeah. show me this. God, if I can just feel you one more time. I'm so cold hearted. Please help me. You know, how do you know that? Because I've met people that were so cold hearted, just ask for one more time. 
It was like they were turned over to a riverbed environment, but they asked God for one more chance, and then we showed up at their doorstep. What happens if you show up on someone's doorstep that was so cold hearted that you came with a fire to burn everything out? That's why it's important to have the fire to call. It's important to carry the fire. Yeah. Because people that you will meet will be so cold hearted and so hurt. And yeah. You go, well, what did I do? They did nothing. You didn't do nothing, but someone else did. You might never do anything, dude. They might cut you a bit and you. It's something someone else did. They might be so hurt because someone in their family hurt them. But when you come with the fire pot, it will melt everything down. All the ice. Come on. Their stony heart will come back to flesh. And their flesh and their heart will come back to God. So many people have a stony heart because they've been hurt because of religious people. It was funny because there was one woman today, she said, I don't like going to church because it wasn't for faith. Because she has a cold heart because she's seen so many people in the church have a fake heart. But if we come to God and we don't have that fake heart, one day her heart will crash and break. It's like me, God broke your heart before you got saved. I remember in the church I was in whenever I actually gave my heart to God. I mean, I went to church all the time. But I mean, I had a choice. You know, I was, a, I was in the middle of the thing. And I said, God... Either I'm leaving this place or I'm going to do some exploits for you. Because I'm not going to play the patty cake with you because I ain't got time for that. Because if I'm going to be a devil, I'm going to be the best devil I can be. I'm going to be honest. If I'm going to go to heaven, I'm going to heaven with an army. But if I'm going to heaven, guess what I'm going to heaven with? An army. I'm not going to play with the middle of the fence and do nothing. Either I'm going to be a gangster or I'm going to be a Holy Ghost fire person. Be honest. Come on. You got to choose it. How am I going to be a Holy Ghost fire person? I'm not gonna play with it. I'm not gonna play anymore. But when we go to people and they're hungry for something, you touch them, their hearts will melt. And I remember the preacher. I, I remember one thing he said: to me, "You're either gonna fly with the eagles or you're gonna be here with the chickens." And it really messed me up because either I'm gonna be on the ground doing nothing and picking the ground doing nothing, or I'm gonna fly like a, with God. And really, we have to make a decision of are we going to really fly with him or are we just going to be pecking the ground all over life? Oh, say that. And, and, I, and that night I said, you know what? I threw my Bible down. And I jumped on my Bible and I said, I'm going to stand on the word. And the people thought I was crazy because I did too because I didn't know what was going on inside of me. But something was moving on the inside of me. My heart was breaking for something new. So you can't tell me that hard hearts can't be broken because my heart was hard. My heart was so hard, I was angry at people. Because so many things happened that no one even knew about. That's how I know God will touch people's hearts, because He did it to me. And let me tell you something, He did it to you too, because you wouldn't be here. You might not have the whole heart, but you ain't get something, that's why you're here. And I remember I was, I was doing the ministry so long, and I, and I started not understanding it. It's just let me tell you something, every day you can learn. We just take every day you learn the word. No matter if you're doing ministry or not doing ministry, you gotta, you gotta read the word. So I started doing ministry, and I, and I didn't understand ministry. I thought man, everyone, you gotta minister, everyone's gonna be nice. I thought, hey, man, that's gonna be a great thing. Everyone loves you. Everyone, I didn't, I learned the hard way. And I started traveling across America, going to Louisiana, going to the St. Louis, going all the way around America, and I said, the pastor ain't always the best. To be honest. So I, that heart that I had before, I started getting hard again. I said, God, I don't like this feeling. I don't like this feeling. It, it, it came hard again. I said, I ain't doing this. I remember I came into a church in Tampa, Florida. The first night I arrived there, I was tired. And, and, I, and I said, man, something's crazy about this church. Because I mean, I felt the power. But I ain't never felt the river like this. And I came up and I, I made a guy named Pastor Eric laid hands on me. Just one finger. And I went down. I was down for three hours. And the whole time I was down, I was crying under the power of God. Because all the hurt men would throw on me was breaking off right to him. And there's people that are hurting and they're waiting for someone to show up. And thank God I was raised in church so I knew where to come and actually get touched. But some people were never raised in this. Some people don't even know that this is even true. 
So they're waiting for you and me to show up on their doorsteps. It might not be the fun times in the sun. It might be in the cold winter days. But it's okay. Because it's all a sacrifice anyways. It's all a sacrifice anyways. Like I was at telling you about the house that was burning. You wouldn't go after your money. You wouldn't go after your cars. You'd go after the people. So I'm going to ask you tonight. Are you going to go after people this year or are you going to stay at home and do nothing? Say it. Say it. Your neighborhood's burning <laughs> on fire. Oh. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You better work now because it's about to become dark. The light is still here. What are you going to do? Your neighborhood's on fire. America's on fire. What are you going to do? I hope you're saying you don't just sit and watch it burn. You have anger in your heart. You have all that nonsense in your heart. You know what you need to get it out tonight. Because God's going to get that out so He can use you to do to shake this community. He's going to use you to change, to change this community. You might say, "Well, they're not my brothers, they're not my sisters." Let me tell you something. In Christ, they're your brothers. That's right. Come on. Amen. The closest thing I've had is not blood. The closest thing I've ever had was actually Christians. Because they picked me up when I was in the mud. A real Christian, a real Christian doesn't backtalk you. A real Christian doesn't push you on down in the mud and hold your breath under there. A real Christian picks you up and wipes you off. Even if you fall and you mess up, they don't hold you under the mud. They pick you back and say, get up. We got work to do. So people who are not picking up, they're not the right people. Get away from them. You don't know I've had, I've had to do that many times to get away from people. They, they would try to, when I fell, they pushed me in the mud. They go, ah, how you feel? When I fell. They didn't understand they were the one that put me in the mud. So some of you need to learn who's around you and let the right people speak in your life. Whew, I'm down to mess up now. Because I'm telling you, I see that house on the fire. It's actually a white house, to be honest with you. Then I started thinking about America, the white house. Are we really going to let our brothers and sisters burn up in that fire? Hmm. I hope we're not that selfish. Because we might be out of the fire, we might be going to heaven. I'm not ready for the rapture. I'm not ready for Jesus to come back. You know why? If he comes back now, my brothers and sisters are still in the fire. Come on. My brothers and sisters are still in the fire. They're still burning. You know what happens when they start burning? They start screaming, Hey! Come on. Uh, some of you are so deaf spiritually. Say it. Oh, Say it. Here, Say it. There's people screaming, help me. Say that. Help me. I remember when I was like eight years old. I was riding with my father. We were coming from the gas station because every morning he would eat there for breakfast and we'd go there and talk and we were just there because I was young and I can remember it so vivid. We pulled up in this in, the, in his daughter's house and it was a tray where it was fire. And he didn't accept that and wait for the fire department. He didn't care about the fire department. And I remember he ran in bus though, he's a big guy. About 350 pounds. 6'2. Went boom! Hit the door as hard as he could. Went in there looking for these grandkids. Looking, trying to make sure there was not in the fire. And I say now eight years old, man, this guy is crazy. And now I'm understanding everything that happened is now coming like, whoa. I don't and he went searching through every place. He didn't stop in the kitchen because it was near. He kept on going to the very back and making sure no one was underneath the table. He went all the way back to make sure no one was in the back bathroom. He checked all over high and low. And our Father in Heaven wants us to go high and low. He wants to just search left and right all over the world, looking for people that are lost and say, hey, he's coming back. Whew. You guys don't get nothing like that, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> it was ready to come. Because I'm telling you, if you get so hungry for God, he wants to use you. 